Can you believe this is our final reading strategy of the year? Before we move on, let's take a look back. This year, we talked about the importance of remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, and evaluating. In the teaching world, this little pyramid represents a concept called Bloom's Taxonomy. In short, it breaks down the different things our brain needs to be able to do in order to really know something. So what's that little section at the top? That represents the highest level in this week's reading strategy. Bloom's calls it creating. We'll talk about it as synthesizing. But the bottom line is that this last part of the process, of the pyramid, is where the real learning happens. What is synthesizing? Synthesizing means to put the pieces together to see them in a new way. If you're into math, think about synthesizing like a math problem. When you take what you already knew, prior knowledge, and add what you learned from reading, the end result is synthesis. Basically, it means we create a new idea. It could be a new perspective, a new opinion, a new understanding, or new insight. When we synthesize, we create something new. Synthesizing is a complex but essential skill. It's difficult because it is often confused with prior knowledge, inferring, or summarizing since we need to use our other strategies in order to synthesize. But it's important to note that synthesizing is more than just activating prior knowledge, inferring, or summarizing. Why is it more? Because we must use that information to create something new. When we synthesize, we are combining new information in the text with our prior knowledge. And our prior knowledge might include ideas we've had from using those other strategies earlier in the reading. Our prior knowledge could come from things we already knew before we read, but it could also mean revisiting predictions, recalling connections, remembering or answering questions, evoking a detail we visualized, revising a summary, applying something that was inferred, or changing an analysis and evaluation of the text. Synthesis is when we go back to the ideas from those other strategies and look at them in a new way in order to have a deeper understanding of the text. Why is synthesizing important? When we synthesize, it causes our opinions, understanding, and knowledge base we learned back when we talked about connecting that this is called schema, to evolve and grow because we're creating something new. If we go back and look at that pyramid from earlier, creating or synthesizing is all the way at the top. This is what we should be trying to reach because this is the highest level of learning. When we synthesize, we create something new. And when we create something new, we learn. Another way to look at it is that synthesizing completes the circle of learning. When we synthesize, we add to the amount of things we know about. We add a brand new part of the web to our schema. Because we add to the amount of things we know about, that gives us more information to tap into for prior knowledge when we read in the future. It gives us more connections to make, more information we can use to analyze and evaluate, and so on. When we synthesize, we become more knowledgeable. How do we synthesize? It's fitting that synthesis is the last strategy we learn. If you think about our very first strategy, prior knowledge, we know that that is something we do before reading. Now, our very last strategy, synthesis, is something we do after reading. We've reached the end. But synthesizing can be tough for two reasons. First, there are multiple things that need to happen in order to synthesize. You need to think about prior knowledge, think about what you just read, and then look at those together to create something new. Second, where we can use some of our other strategies at practically any time, it might not always feel natural for us to synthesize. In fact, sometimes we might have to try really hard to see things in a different way. That's why it's important that we practice synthesizing every time we read. Whether we're reading fiction texts, like novels and short stories, or nonfiction texts, like textbooks or news articles. 
It's very likely that we will need to train our brains how to think in order to make synthesizing a habit when we read. So here are some other ways to think about synthesizing. You can think about your prior knowledge, add what you read, and use it to create something new in the following ways. Form a new opinion or change an existing opinion. You might say, I used to think this, but then I read this, and now I think this instead. Gain insight about something or someone. You might say, I knew this, and I read this, so now I know this happens because... Understand something better or more deeply. You might say, I knew this, and I read this, so now I know all this. Or see things from a different perspective. You might say, I knew this, and I look at it this way, but now I can see it from this side too. It's important to note that just because you see things from a different perspective doesn't mean you have to change your opinion. It just means that you are recognizing that someone else might see things differently from you. You can still hold your opinion while understanding how someone else might see it in a different way. What are some examples? Now that we have a good idea of what synthesizing is, why it's important, and how to use it, Let's take a look at some examples. The following is a short excerpt from a historical fiction book titled The Book Thief by Marcus Duzak. It's about a little girl who lives in Germany during World War II at the height of the Holocaust, when millions of Jewish citizens were forced into concentration camps. Before we read, stop and think about your prior knowledge. What do you know about Germany during World War II and the Holocaust? Or, what perspective do you have about German citizens during World War II and the Holocaust? Now let's read the excerpt from the book. I think Liesel's mother knew this quite well. She wasn't delivering her children to the higher echelons of Munich, but a foster home had apparently been found, and if nothing else, the new family could at least feed the girl and boy a little better and educate them properly. Think about your prior knowledge and add what you learned. What can you create from this? A new opinion? New insight? Can you see things from a new perspective? While you certainly might have other correct answers, here's one example of how you might synthesize this information. Prior knowledge. Germany is often looked at as the bad guy during World War II. They were the enemy of the US. The documentaries and movies I've always seen show Hitler and his Nazi army or the horrific ways the Jews were treated. What I read. In the book, a German mother is giving up her kids for adoption because she can't take care of them. Synthesis. I guess I never really thought about the other German citizens, the ones who weren't Jewish, but who also didn't fight or even support Hitler, the citizens who also lived in fear of the Nazi party. In a way, they were victims too. Many of those citizens, like Liesel's family, were starving because of the war. Kids like Liesel weren't old enough to even have a choice, and they suffered too. In this example, synthesis caused the opinion of Germans during World War II to evolve. Before, they were all thought of as enemies, but after reading, it was discovered that this was an overgeneralization. Some Germans would still be considered enemies during this time, but it also needs to be understood that not every German may have been guilty of those acts or beliefs. We created something new and understood this subject more deeply. Let's take a look at another example. In a foreign language textbook, you are reading about how names reflect cultural significance. Before we read, stop and think about your prior knowledge when it comes to giving a child a name. Read what the text says. Last names are often more than just a display of lineage. They hold additional significance for many different cultures. In many Nordic countries, like Denmark and Sweden, the last name is often formed by combining the father's first name with the word son. So a man named Neil might name his son John Nielsen, and he might name his son Eric Johnson, and so on. Many Hispanic last names are formed in the same way, where Rodriguez means son of Rodrigo, or Lopez means son of Lope. Many Hispanic last names trace back to common names in medieval Spain. 
A similar occurrence is true for Arabic cultures, where some last names honor common first names, such as Ali. Others represent characteristics, like Hassan, which means handsome or strong. Last names in African cultures are typically derived from characteristics as well, such as Kanu, which means to love. In Western cultures, almost all Africans who were enslaved took on the last name of their owner, such as Washington or Jones. Often, these Anglo-Saxon last names for the countries that make up Great Britain come from either the occupation of the family, such as Baker, for one who bakes, or the town where the family lived, such as Holland or Pickering. Many last names in Asian cultures are also based on location, such as Chan, which was a region in ancient China, and can also reference nature, such as Park, which means magnolia tree. The one constant across most cultures, though, is that the same name can be spelled differently on purpose, such as by region of the country, or accident. So Nielsen and Nielsen both refer to the son of Neil, and Wang can also be spelled Wang. After reading this passage, what can you synthesize? Think about what you already knew and add what you just read. Do you understand anything more deeply? Or did you gain any insight after reading? Again, you may have a different correct response, but here's an example of what you might have said. Prior knowledge. I know that parents usually pick a first name, but the last name is usually a family name that is passed down from generation to generation. I also know that many first names mean something, like a characteristic or personality trait. What I read. Last names for many different cultures were formed to represent the father's name. Others point to where a family lived, the family trade, or a characteristic. Synthesis. These cultures are all very different, and the last names that are common in these cultures look and sound very different from other cultures, too. But there's actually a lot of similarities in the ways last names were formed. I gained insight into how such different groups of people from all across the world seem to have some very similar values. When it comes to names, which are very personal, all these different groups of people are really not so different. In this example, Synthesis allowed the reader to understand more than just where names came from. It allowed the reader to see a connection between different cultures. When so much seems to separate people today by their differences, recognizing what we have in common might help us look past some of those differences. Synthesizing helped the reader see things from a different perspective. Now that we've broken down a few examples, let's try one more short one. Before reading the following statement on a new policy, what prior knowledge do you have about curfews? Read the following statement and then see if you can see things from a new perspective. Various malls in the area have seen an increase in unsupervised minors, especially in the evening. After also seeing an increase in violent and or destructive behavior, many customers and store employees have indicated they would feel more comfortable if an adult was present. These malls have begun implementing new youth supervision policies to help prevent disruptive behavior. Many of the malls now require anyone under the age of 18 to have an escort over the age of 21 on weekend evenings, usually beginning around 5 or 6 p.m. until closing. Think about your prior knowledge and add what you just read. Can you synthesize this information to see it from a new perspective, perhaps that of a mall employee or a customer? Hopefully you were able to understand why a supervisor at the mall would feel the need to enact this new policy based on the information provided. I suspect that most teenagers would be against a policy that requires them to have an escort at the mall, but perhaps you can understand that these malls were under pressure from its customers and employees to make this change. To reiterate, while you certainly don't have to agree with someone else's perspective, as long as you recognize their point of view, you showed that you are able to synthesize information you read. Recap Synthesizing means to put the pieces together to see them in a new way. We think about our prior knowledge, add what we just read, and put them together to create something new. When we synthesize, it adds to our schema and makes us more knowledgeable. 
We could emerge with a new opinion, a new perspective, a new understanding, or new insight about what we're reading. This is where the most learning happens, so we need to make it a habit to think about what we can synthesize every time we read. That wraps up our flipped lesson on synthesizing and our flipped lesson series on reading strategies. If you have any questions about this strategy, feel free to watch all or part of the video again or ask your teacher when you return to class. Click the link in the description box below to access a Google form for this lesson.